A couple weeks ago, the Portland Police Department implemented a, a program where our uniform patrol officers that work the street 24-7, uh, 365, are now uh, trained and equipped with uh, individual packets uh, of Narcan. And that's four milligrams. And really what Narcan is, uh, for a lay person, call it a, an, an antidote for opioids and an opioid uh, overdose. Uh, and now they've received training. Uh, they have a certification that would allow them to utilize uh, Narcan when they run into these situations. And what Narcan looks like uh, is, is a small packet like that, very similar to uh, something you may find, uh, Flonase as an example or something of that manner. This isn't a prop, this is something that I'm certified to carry, something that I carry for duty every day. Um, so it's something that our officers now carry as well when they're working the street. The volume of, of overdose situations that our officers find themselves in uh, in this community is really overwhelming. Yeah, the opioid epidemic has impacted our entire country and certainly right here in our own backyard. It's something that we see on a regular basis. Uh, so in the city of Portland, a beautiful spot that where we live and work and, and raise families, we had 46 fatal overdoses in 2015. The vast majority of them did involve an opioid uh, of one sort or another, whether that's heroin and fentanyl or some kind of a, of a mix. Uh, and it's killing people right here in our community. What we found is that we had a lot of overdose, fatal overdose situations and a lot of uh, substance use disorder stemming from prescription medications. So there's been a lot of conversations, there's been a lot of work around prescription meds. So now as that supply slowly got weaned off and cut back on by the medical profession and law enforcement, um, individuals uh, made personal decisions and business decisions to say that if I'm going to buy an Oxycontin as an example illegally on the open market off the street, that may be a dollar a milligram. So you may buy one Oxy 80, 80 milligrams and cost you $80. When you could buy heroin for five, seven, ten dollars a bag, you know, if you suffer from a substance use disorder, which is a brain disease, and you're driven not to get sick, you're driven not to detox, uh, in your bedroom or in, in the jail, uh, you're going to pursue something that's readily available and cheap. Uh, and that happens to be heroin. Uh, and unfortunately, heroin is now uh, laced with fentanyl and other things that are far more potent than the original heroin back in the day or even recently. Uh, and now we have these fatal overdose scenarios because people really don't know what they're using. Uh, you could use for 10 years and know exactly how much you can take and how much you can use. But if the next batch that you get is cut with something that's incredibly strong, you may not survive. And that's what we're seeing. Acts every walk of life. Every walk of life. Uh, because it's the high school kid that blew his knee out. It's the soccer mom that uh, they got Oxycontin for getting their wisdom teeth out. Uh, back injuries, you name it. They can happen to anybody at any time. Uh, so we're finding that this runs the gamut from incredibly young to those that are elderly based on definition. Uh, it's impacting everybody. You have to have prevention, you have to have treatment, and you have to have enforcement. If you just focus on any one of those three legs without equal disbursement of resources and time and energy, and then you're going to fail. Uh, so we do need to focus on prevention. We've got to be talking to our kids as early as possible, as often as possible. It does focus on treatment. You have to have options. Um, you have to have detox beds and you have to have residential opportunities and medically assisted treatment is incredibly imperative to this uh, equation. And we need to continue to enforce the laws as they exist uh, because if you're a predator and you're bringing dope into our community and you're killing people, you need to pay for that. Uh, you need to be punished for that. Uh, so it has to be all three legs. And there's only 16, 16, one six detox beds in the entire state of Maine. Now, it happens to be housed at the Milestone Foundation, which is an incredible organization, you know, a block and a half from us, uh, heading east here from the police department. Uh, but imagine having 16 beds for 1.3 million people. And they will tell you that they estimate that they turn away about 100 people a month that are seeking treatment. Uh, and they just don't have the space, they don't have the capacity, uh, they don't have the ability to treat everybody. There's some great programs out there, there's some good people working hard on this issue. Uh, the Greater Portland Addiction Collaborative is, uh, is, a, is, a, is an organization with the backbone is Mercy Hospital and uh, Milestone is at the table, the Portland Recovery Community Center, ourselves. Uh, there's a lot of good people there, uh, Community Housing of Maine, uh, and that's a process uh, unlike anyone that I've seen across the state, or the country for that matter. And it's really geared to be a comprehensive, community-based, sustainable model. And we need more programs like that.
Uh, and the, the issue is money. It's resources. Uh, it's really, uh, and I talk about it a lot, it's, it's really moving beyond the interest phase where people want to talk about this to the investment stage where people actually want to do something about this. If you know somebody that's uh, suffering from an opioid related substance use disorder, uh, then the first thing I'd ask you to do is, is get educated. Learn really what you're talking about. Find out what your resources are locally. Uh, legislation was recently passed that if as a family member or friend, somebody that's in that world, you can be prescribed Narcan. So you'll have that life-saving drug available to you if, God forbid, you need it uh, and your loved one, you find them in the house or in the car or uh, in any location. And you're going to have the immediate opportunity to potentially save their life. Uh, and then I would say on top of that, to be involved moving forward, uh, you know, hold our elected officials responsible uh, for legislation and for the support uh, of this population and of all of us. Uh, so I think it's very, very important that people reach out. Uh, they find out who their recovery uh, allies are in the community, and there are plenty. Uh, but you just got to figure out what works for you, what community are you in, and what resources are available. I'll tell you, we didn't carry Narcan for a long time simply because we have a full-time advanced life support service uh, with our paramedics and our fire department. We have an incredible partnership and there's really good people over there. So traditionally, we respond to overdoses together at the same time when we arrive. Um, but I will say that uh, over the last four days, we've used Narcan four times. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then we used it again last night. Um, so it's those scenarios. Uh, that we want to make sure that officers have the tools necessary again to do that job. Uh, if you can try to save somebody's life, whether you're, you're saving 30 seconds before MECU gets there or a minute or two minutes um, or they're going to be 20 minutes, we don't know. Uh, and I'm not saying that, that we're directly saving lives because paramedics are right behind us, but I think we are. Uh, you know, it makes sense that if we have an opportunity to use this, um, that it's given these victims, it's given our residents uh, a leg up. Um, for survival and I think it's important that we do it.